To God alone be the glory. We have a word from the living God today that is titled Keeping the Righteous Standards of God. Keeping the Righteous Standards of God. We said this is more like a word of exhortation for the day. The book of Romans, Romans chapter 6, and the verse is 14. Romans 6, verse 14. It says, Sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. This is a very powerful scripture. Very, very powerful. Amazing scripture. Because this is something that a child of grace might not take it for granted. Must not take it for granted. Because you know that because we are under grace, uh, we take grace for granted. But this is what grace does in a child of God's life. He said, when you have that grace of God, sin has no dominion over your life. So, if you are saying that you are a child of God of this dispensation of grace, and sin is having dominion over you, it means that the grace of God is not sufficient for you. It means that the grace of God is not working for you. It means that you are not under the grace of God, operating under the grace of God. Why? Because sin has dominion over your life. So, I mean, as much as you be moving around and be boasting of how wonderful you are and your fellowship with the church and everything else, at the end of the day, what the Lord is looking for is the character that you have. The character that you don't display in the church, that is what the Lord is watching. The character that you are displaying with your husband and with your wife, with your fellow people, this is what the Lord is seeing. And that is what God is seeing it as your works towards his kingdom. So you can come to the church and be faking and be, you know, letting people know that, oh, how wonderful, great man of God, great man of, you know, great woman of God and doing so much, but yet... What you display outside, those people that are calling you great because they don't see those things, God sees those things. God sees, he sees everything. He sees everything. He sees everything. I made a statement this morning. I said there is no way under the grace that you will come to fellowship with sin. You will be sinning and be thinking that you are going scot-free simply because you have run to God and ask God for forgiveness. Let me tell you, when you have sinned and you go to God and you ask God for forgiveness, God will forgive you. God definitely will forgive you. But what does it mean when God has forgiven you of your sins? Does it truly mean that, oh, whatever sin that you committed has no effect upon your life? Let me tell you, it has. It has. It has. It has effect upon your life. Because it's a kingdom principle. This is where the deception is truly coming from. Because they are thinking that, oh, I, I have committed the sin. Uh, the grace of God is available to me. I have come and I have asked God for forgiveness. So the Lord has forgiven me. It's finished. God has forgiven you. It is not finished. Because the sin that you committed had already affected your spiritual life. The fellowship that you have with God... It is restored because you run to God and you told God to forgive you. And the Lord has forgiven you. So you are not going to go deeper and deeper in sin. Compared to if you did not ask the Lord for forgiveness at all. So you are just staying in that darkness of sins. And when you are in the midst of that darkness, darkness keep overshadowing your life. So you move from one sin to another. And it comes to a point that your conscience is completely sealed. So even when you are sinning, you don't feel like you are sinning. 
But we are not talking about those people. We are talking about the ones that are at the vineyard of the Lord. Moving and swimming in the grace of Almighty God, in the goodness of God. And taking that for granted. You cannot entertain sin in your life. The proof is that he said, if sin has dominion over your life, it means that you are not under grace. He said, sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but ye are under grace. If you are under grace and sin is having dominion over you, it means that you are not under grace, you are under law. You are living today, which is called the dispensation of the church. It's the dispensation of grace, our time. It's the dispensation of grace really working for everyone that is under this dispensation. Or even everyone that has come in so-called fellowship with God, that you were born again. I'm not sure about this. So a child of God must be watching this thing. Full deception of the devil is to let you believe that it is because the grace of God is, is, is there. Apostle Paul said, is it because the grace is there that I will frustrate that grace? That I will continue sinning? He said, God forbid. God forbid. So I will never find myself in that way. I gave an illustration this morning. I said, if you take a little plastic of water and uh, it is filled, that is your fellowship with God, your life with God. The moment that sin comes to your life, you know what it does? It's like you have taken, you know, something to punch that, that water. The hole that you made in the plastic, the bottle of that water, that water will come down to the level of that hole. To the level of that hole. You know what it means? It is because the reason why it is not going beyond that hole, which is right here, and not coming down here, it is when you run to God and say, Lord, please uh, restore me. Lord, please uh, forgive me. Lord, please. But you see, the sin had already been committed. This is the working of the Holy Spirit to prevent you from sinning. So when, when the Holy Spirit is telling you that you are a child of God, don't get yourself into this situation. That is called prevention. That is called prevention because if you go ahead and you will not listen to the Spirit of the Lord and commit that sin, it will definitely affect your life. It will definitely affect your life. So sin by itself is not something that a child of God must entertain in his life under any condition, so-called I am under grace, that after all, I have prayed to God and the Lord has forgiven me. Let me tell you, God has forgiven you. The Lord's forgiveness will keep you going in his fellowship. But now, you used to be at this level. That sin brought you at this level. You're going to have to work your own salvation and come back again. It will definitely affect you. So, do not think that, oh, uh, in the name of Jesus. I call these things the salvation tools. What is available in the child of God's life that restore the child of God into fellowship with God and also to continue his life. But if you do not have understanding of the use of these tools and you will be frustrating your life by just getting yourself into sins, you are coming down. You, it is definitely going to affect you. Every sin that you commit affects your life. Every sin that you commit will what affect your life. Even when you have come and asked God for forgiveness, the Lord will, for, will forgive you. And that forgiveness, it is to restore you back into his fellowship again. So that, but definitely you have already come down. That's a fact. Amen? Sin. So in Romans 8, let me read from verse 1 to 6. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Why? Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. We need to explain this. There is a law. There is a law. Everything is about law. But now, you know, 
the law in Christ Jesus and the law in Moses. It is the time of the law and the time of grace. Sin shall not have dominion over you because you are under grace. You are not under the law. The law in terms of Moses is a law that will keep you in death. You keep dying. Because at that time, they do not have what it takes. David was just yearning for that. He desires that the Holy Spirit that we have today would have been indwelling in him to really <laughs> help him to fellowship with his God. We have something that no man in the Old Testament has. But yet, we keep finding grounds to go and live the type of life that those people of the law of Moses were living. When you have something that is higher, because, you see, you don't see the value of what the Lord God has given you as of this stage. So you keep frustrating what you have today and be willing to see, oh, uh, if only uh, David did this. Let me tell you, if David had what you have today, David wouldn't have done what, you, what, what, what he did. Absolutely not. Anyone that is living today, the least of the kingdom of God, the least in the kingdom of God is greater than anybody that have lived in the Old Testament. He said John the Baptist was the greatest, but the least under the grace of God, under the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is greater than John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the greatest among all that fellowship with God. Jesus made that statement. But he said, the very least among us today that are under the grace of God is greater than John the Baptist. So when we see people preaching from the pulpit and all their references are from the Old Testament and this one, I, he wants to be like David, he wants to be like this one, he wants to, let me tell you, be like Jesus and you'll be okay. Be like Jesus, be desire to be like Jesus. Because it says that, he said, John 1.17, he said, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth, it came by what? By Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. So you want to live your life under that grace of God, that is the power to live your life in protection. The power to live your life to avoid contentions and downfalls. Because the grace will warn you, the grace of God will let you know that where you are going, it's <laughs> no end, no end route. Don't go there. The sin that you are about to commit, the spirit of the Lord will prompt you that this is not something that a child of God must be doing. But he is watching to see if you will use your own will to overrule the will of the spirit of God. And that is what is going on. Today, a child of God is a child of power. A child of God is a child of power. A child of God is a child of power. We write it in Job 33, how God is even using simple dream. Simple dream. He said that, huh, I have 24 hours. A day is composed of 24 hours. 12 hours in the day, 12 hours at night. I have 24 hours to wake my children out. When I have something to give it to them, I have 24 hours to deliver that message for the day. I try it during daytime. They were too busy. My children were too busy. They couldn't catch it. But I come to them at night. In the midst of their deep sleep. And seal it instructions to them. Seal it instructions to them. Seal it instructions to them. Hallelujah. Seal it instructions. So, you see, this is how far God can go. When you are distracted, the Lord was just, you know, he would do everything by the time that all your distractions are over. God will still knock at the door of your dreams. And say that, my son, my daughter, this is what I have for you. To prevent you from falling. To prevent you from falling. So you can see the type of power that a child of God has been released as of today. It's not a joke. And you can't take those things for granted. So when people are sitting in their homes and doing evils, planning evils against the children of God, you see, let me tell you, one thing, he said, you know, you, are, you, you gather together and you are around your evil tables and you are planning evil against people's life. When they are resting, that is the time that the Lord is revealing those things to them. They are resting. When they are resting, they are resting, they are sleeping. God will come and start showing them those things. 
You know, when that child of God will come out of that night vision and say, Lord, I thank you. Therefore, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and start targeting that meeting and the plan that you have, that plan shall surely be scattered because of the power. Because of the power. There is a backup, such a wonderful backup in the life of a child of God today. He said, a child of God that is not entertaining his life in sin, it's a child that walks without any form of con you know, condemnation upon his life. Why? Because he's walking by the Spirit. He's walking by the Spirit. He himself might not be there, but the Spirit of God will be there to look into the evil that you are planning against that child. And that God Almighty will see through that his Spirit will come after you so that you will not take the life of his child. That is the power that the child of God is swimming in today. So as, as, as a child of God will have understanding of the life that he has today and preventing sin from, you know, entertaining his life, that child walks with a lot of what? Power. A lot of power. Power. So God tells you, Philippians 4 says, he said, be careful for nothing. How can you be living and not be careful for? I mean, people are busy being careful. I mean, but when you see the background, your backbone, what really make you <laughs> who you are, you see that and he said, you know what, whatever that comes my way, it's all good unto God's glory. It's all good unto God's glory because I know that at the end of the day, the Lord shall surely turn the evil into my good and I walk in dominion, in fellowship, seeking to create a higher level of fellowship with my God. The rest of them, it is onto God's hands to handle those things. This is how a child of God as of dispensation of grace today is really. So you are bound by that law in Christ Jesus. The life of the spirit, the law in Christ Jesus. That is the Romans 2. That is written just right here. He said the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus that has made me free from the law of sin and death. Why? Verse 3 of Romans 8. Because he said, for what the Lord could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Condemned sin in the flesh. So, when a child of God comes to the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. When we read such a, such a scripture, when we read such a scripture, what comes really into your, you know, into your mind? It is the law, the law. The law of the spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life. So in Christ Jesus, no, now that you are in Jesus, you are ruled by new laws and regulations. A power that is overshadowing your life as a backbone and keep you going day by day. Focus on Jesus and nobody can mess up with your slips. That is what it means. Power. Power. But this power is very venerable when one is entertaining his life in sin. So if you break the hedge, the serpent shall bite. So as far as you keep the hedge around you, serpent has no way to bite you. No way. No way. Because God is the one that is watching the movement of the serpent around your home. The movement of the serpent around your life. God is the one that is doing the watching. What do you do? What you do is in your head, keep looking for God. Keep looking for God and keep searching for God. Amazing. Amazing. This is the power. When you say that, you say, oh, uh, I'm a child of God. I have power. I am telling you your source of power. If you go and just, you know, uh, uh, open a door of sin to your source of power, it will affect you. It will affect you. God, why are you not preventing me from sinning? If you knew that this is going to break our fellowship. Why are you not? The Holy Spirit told you. But your own will would not accept the leadings of the Holy Spirit. Sin, there is a pleasure in sin. So what a man is seeing is only the pleasure that is, that is in sin. But that is also the power of sin. The pleasure in sin is the power of sin. 
So don't, do not think that they will just come and say, sir, they are coming and you are thinking, it's, oh, they don't have power. Let me tell you, they have power. God has given them that power. God has given them that power. But the God that you serve, he's the source of all powers. So what is your problem? Stand, do the right thing and allow God to move. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Savior. The law could not do so many things because it was weak through the flesh. But anyone that has come under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is such an amazing, powerful child of God. Amazing, powerful child of God. Thank you, my Lord. So verse 4 of Romans 8, verse 4 of Romans 8, it says, These things, they are all done, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. The righteousness of the law must be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So you can see that the right standard of a child of God, keeping the right standard, you know, of God in your life, is to make sure that you are constantly in fellowship with the Spirit of God, which is in fellowship with God. This is where the right way of doing things is really coming from and staying away from sin. What you cannot do, that does not mean that someone will not do it. So in that in mind, you are very careful, you are extremely careful about others' reaction. What they might do, you might not be the one who is going to do it. But be careful because your fellowship with them, whatever that they will do might also affect you. Might also affect you. So, a child of God, your protection must be coming at least so far from two places. You have to make sure that the fellowship is going on and you also have to make sure that your surrounding, your interaction with people is not leading you to situations that is not going to be pleasant to your God. You break the hedge, the serpent will bite. Sometimes, in this case, it's not like it is you that is breaking the hedge, but it is your fellowship. He said your friends, they will corrupt you. Your friends will corrupt you. So you choose ungodly friends. He said, oh, I move with them, but I don't do what they do. Let me tell you, what they do will affect you. What you don't do that they do will definitely affect you. Because what they do is against your God. What they do is against your God. And you saying that you have such a wonderful fellowship with your God, and you are going to put yourself in the situation that your God is against it. What, what is that? Say, Lord, I'm not the one doing it. But you are the one that went there. You are the one that is entertaining the fellowship with them. So what is it that you are breaking that fellowship? Breaking it. And many, many, many have been falling victims upon this type of situation. Protecting the righteous way of living. Because he said, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded, I mean to be spiritual, spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and what? And peace. You know what it means? It means that if you will be living your life constantly with the, by the leadings of the Holy Ghost, the peace will be upon your portion. But to be kindly minded, oh, these are my friends. Oh, this is how the tradition is. Oh, let me do it because that is how it is done over here. We have come to Rome. Let's do like the Romans do. Let me tell you, you are going to do like the Romans do. You will die like the Romans are dying. You will die like the Romans are dying because you cannot be of a child of God, cannot be of God and be going to Rome and say that I have come to Rome. This is how Roman, Romans, they do it. So let me do it. You will die like the Romans die. The same thing. Absolutely. The same thing. So you do as your God leads you to do. You live by the spirit of the Lord. Everybody is going that direction, but the Lord is telling you that my daughter goes this direction. Everyone is taking it that way, but God tells you, don't move. God, why would I not move? It is coming. It is very hard. The Lord says, stay here. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Because he knows. He knows all that is going on unto God's glory. Hallelujah. So Titus chapter 2 and the verse is 11 to 12. Titus 2, 11 to 12. Thank you, Lord. Apostle Paul wrote to the man of God, Titus. He said, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men. Could you believe this? 
The grace of God that bringeth salvation. That is security. That is to be saved. That is salvation. Uh -huh. It said that salvation is brought by the grace of God. It did not appear only unto you. It is appearing to all men. So everyone has the same chance. It is the decision of people that is making them do what they do. What they do. So sometimes, you know, we said, okay, oh, we have so much pity on this ones, and now that the Lord has saved me, let me also move there. I am going to save them. Some, they don't want to come. Some, they don't want to come. Some, they do not want to come. So the Lord said, even in your salvation, do you, have you seen how the Lord, when he was seven, you know, sending the 70s out, two by two, he said, when you are going, don't take any perks. Don't greet anybody on the way. When you knock at the home and they open that door for you, go in, wherever they serve you, eat with them, stay with them, preach the gospel to them. Because it means that the peace of God is already in that house. Leave your peace also with them and continue. But you knock at a door that they are not opening you. He said, leave, just shake yourself out. He did the same thing also for the cities. So you come to their city, they accept you, stay there. Remain there as a blessing. They do not accept you. He said, move on. Shake the dust out of your feet. And move on. But you know what we do? What we do is that we said, oh, no, 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 no. The persistency. This is my own brother. This is my own sister. I have to, let me tell you, your own brother, your own sister will let you lose your salvation. Your own brother, your own sister, your own mother will let you lose your salvation. This salvation, the grace of God, it has appeared unto everybody. He said, you need no man today to tell you that there is a God. You need no man today to tell you that there is a God. But as much as you continue preaching to them, their hearts are so hardened that they will not come. God said, it is okay. I know you have done your part. Continue praying for them, but move on. Continue praying for them, but what? But move on. Because if you don't, you shall surely be entangled in the midst of what they are doing and they will get you and you will lose your salvation. Everybody has the same chance. Everybody today, everybody has exactly the same chance. The salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ, that grace, it had appeared to everybody. It is the heart of people that are making choices in life. Consider that what the project that you want to do is more important than the church. Okay, go on. Continue with your project. Go on. Continue with your project. I was amazed. This one here, it happens, you know, in my face. I was with Antia. We went to the funeral home together. And I asked the question. I asked myself, ah, uh, what should we bring, you know, as, uh, what, what do you need from us for this? He said, oh, uh, for, we need some clothing. Uh, so we need he has a suit. They even asked. He has a suit. We said, yes, he has a suit. They said, bring suit. Uh, bring shirt and maybe tie. And uh, they said, underwear and all that. And I asked, I said, shoe? He said, oh, uh, shoe. Okay, you can bring it. If you can put it, we will just put it in the, in, in the coffin. I said, ah. So that's all. He said, yeah, that's all he needs. That's all he needs. That's all he needs. As much as we are, we are working so hard, a time comes in the reality of man that all that you need, probably, <laughs> is just what you have to stand. And this one is even for people to, I mean, focus is such a wonderful man of God. So, <laughs> but some, they are dead. Uh, they don't even give them <laughs> They are lovely suit to even go. But over there, God does not need that suit. The reason why they put that suit is for us that are going to, we call it viewing. So we will see him in that suit. But the reality of it is that you are taking nothing. You are taking nothing, nothing, nothing. There are some things that a man, a child of God's eyes have to be opened because there is a reality. You go there, go to that funeral home. I have learned so much within short time about the funeral home business and the cemetery business. Amazing. Amazing. As people are dying and going, as people have rejected Jesus, 
Over here, choices are even made at the funeral homes and the cemeteries. Cemeteries, they have compartments. They have places. According to how much you have, that would depend where they're going to put your grave. It's a reality. It's a reality. But at the end of the day, if you do not secure a place for yourself with the Father, it's like everything of you scattered. 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 So the choices is for everybody. But what is it that, what type of choice you are making? So keeping in you know, the righteous way of living with God is just wisdom. It's a great wisdom. It's a great wisdom. So let's continue in this. Thank you, my Lord. So Titus, this grace of God that brought salvation to all men, it is teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world. In this present world, make the right decisions. In this present world, understand what governs through life. Choices. Choices and choices. Everybody. So, you see, in your way, in your fellowship with God, the decisions that you are making in how you want to do the things of God, it is all being counted. All being counted. All of them. It's all, every single thing that you do, everything is being recorded. God sees the heart. He sees the heart and he sees the heart that is beating after his life, after his righteousness. So you can't fake. You can fake to man, but you can't fake God. That's a fact. You can fake to man, but you cannot fake God. And I have already told you that I just learned so much from, you know, uh, funeral home business and, uh, and, 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 and cemetery businesses. It's all full of deception. Full of deception. Secure a life before Almighty God and it shall be well with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Lord. Mm. First Corinthians chapter 6 and the verses 19 and 20. Have 10 more minutes to go and we stop just right here. Thank you, Lord. He said, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. You see that? The body. It's the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. That you receive that from God. That you who is moving around and boasting that you are who you are. He said that you are not of your own. The life that you have is not yours. You are to live and make a decision according to the righteousness of God. Make the right decisions. Live seeking to be protected and secured in the future. What is it that you can leave for your children? What is it that you can leave also for yourself? You know that we are dying, but we think that we don't have... Uh, yeah, so the life that you are living, you know, we live and we are trying to live inheritance for the ones that are behind. But make sure that you keep something for yourself. Let me repeat this. As you are living and thinking of your will, how to write it and how much you give to this one and what and all that, also think of yourself, of what you are taking to go. Also think of yourself. Because the Lord is going to ask you, what did you bring? What do you have? God is definitely going to ask, is it not what is it? He said, he is going to, we are going to be judged according to our choice. Number one, the choice. Did you make Jesus as your choice? That is the first stage. Okay, you did. Stay here. Once you have, you did not. Okay, stay here. That is the sheep and the goats, okay? That's, that's number one. Number two, what do you have? The what you have is not even for they that did not make the choice for Christ. The what you have is for they that made Jesus as their choice. So once you, you are there, now you made Jesus as your choice, Jesus, they're going to look into what do you have in your hand? What do you have? What do you carry? What is your works? 
What is your works? So, you know, these are all wisdom that a child of God must have as of today. Do not let America deceive you or wherever you are, your environment deceive you. Today you are thinking that life is very, very good. But Apostle Paul tells you, he said that the present life, the present life must be living in full wisdom. Full wisdom. Full wisdom. Otherwise, ah, you will regret. You will regret every moment that you live here. We are so worried about so many things that are displayed in our faces. But the, the life that you have is not your own. The Holy Ghost is living to help you live that, that life. To bring the righteous way of living unto God's standard. Hallelujah. He said, for ye are bought. Ye are bought with a price. First Corinthians six twenty. Ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which, God, which are God's. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your body, your spirit, which are God's. They belong to Almighty God. That body, the body that you are moving, uh -huh, you move around. We saw Mama Vicky standing here. Mama Vicky said, bless the name of the Lord. This coming Saturday, I am 68. And look at that woman. You'll be thinking that <laughs> she's, I said, ah, fr Friday, was it? Yeah, Friday night when I picked her, I was telling, I said, ah, Mama Body. Uh, Mama, <laughs> you see, Mama Body. Mama, Mama Vicky, you are very blessed. Though. Look at what God had. Uh, she said, Pastor, I am blessed beyond. I am blessed beyond your imagination. And the woman stood here this morning. Now I understand what she's saying. I understand what she's saying. She said, I am 68 and look at me. I am 68 and look at me. There is no way that you can tell that this woman is 68. You see, so that body that God has given you, the strength and everything else, that says, oh, I am blessed by God. Make sure that your blessings are secured. Make sure that your blessings are what? Are secured. Are secured. This body is for the Lord and it is lived to, unto God's glory. It's for the Lord and it is lived unto what? God's glory. And the Lord has given you a Holy Ghost to help your spirit to overcome the loss of this world. To overcome. So everything that you are boasting and bragging of, please remember that it is not forever. It is God that is keeping you going, but because he has it for his own purpose. So use it for God. Some have dedicated their bodies to, to Satan. And when they are moving, they are causing people to fall. Causing people to fall. That woman has decided that I said, I will never marry. Marriage is foolishness. So the body that she's using, she's using the body, destroying the works of God. People seeing that body, they are fallen. The, the, that body has become the embodiment of Satan. And Satan himself is using this. Using the body, releasing sicknesses and diseases. We have people moving around, they have AIDS. They said, ah, I got it from somewhere. So before I leave, I will make sure that I also spread it. A child of God must be sensitive to all these things that are moving around. God said that that body, it is mine. And it is meant to live unto my glory. Be sensitive. Be sensitive. The same eyelash that they said, ah, everybody is commenting on your eyelash, right? Uh -huh. And then the eyebrow and everything. And so now you are even, since they started the comment, you are even adding something on, 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 on top. To make it, to, to beautify it. Please, be sensitive. Be sensitive that it is for God's glory. That it must be used unto God's glory. The shape that God has given you. The shape. The woman's shape as the man's shape. Says back. And then when it's summertime, you stand out there. I'm sure it's says back. Let me tell you. If it is not used unto God's glory, that says back, you will drink it and you become drunk and die. We have bottles. They call them says back, right? Uh, you go and you carry so don't be deceived about that six pack. It's a woman loves it. <laughs> they love me. Satan loves you and he's killing you. He's killing you. Sensitive. Sensitivity in the, you know, in the life that God has given us here is very, very important. I am bringing everything to an end. First John chapter 3 and the verse is 23, 24. The Lord said, and this is his commandment. This is God's commandment that we should believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ. Is it not what we said? Number one choice. Number one choice. 
believe in Jesus and love one another as he gave us a commandment. And he that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him. That is the sin. He that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him. And he in him. You dwell in God, you keep God's commandment, you stay away from sin. You are a child of God and God recognizes you as his child. And hereby we know that he abided in us. Hereby we know that God or the Holy Spirit abided in us by the Spirit which he had given us. You see that? We know that we are in him. The reason why we are in him is because he has given us a spirit that dwells in our body. That is how we know that we are a child of God. So if you know that you are a child of God, that the Holy Spirit of the Lord is in you, that this body, it is meant for the Holy Spirit to tabernacle in that body, then you will not make, misuse this body. You carry God with you everywhere that you go. You carry God with you everywhere that you go. Everywhere that you go. Sin cannot have dominion over your life unless you give your mind to sin. That is the walking in carnality. Giving your mind to sin, to the worldly things. He said, you are not giving your mind to the spirit that is in you, helping you to overcome that situation of sin. But you gave your mind to the context, you know, to the environment, to everything that you are seeing, the friends and everything else. The Lord said, you shall surely die. This is when the condemnation is upon your life. So it's an inner life that a child of God must seek to live. The difference between a child of God, we have seen it this morning. Keeping the righteous way of living is to keeping the leadings of the Holy Ghost in you as a priority of your everyday choices and your everyday steps. They that have made the other choice, rejecting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that is in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 63, and the verse is 10. He said, but these ones that have rejected Jesus, they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, God also turned to become their enemies. And he fought against them. You see that? This is it. We said it. It's the choice that will lead your life. We have two choices just right here. Either you go among the sheep. Or you jump and become a goat. You know how the goats are. Uh -huh. The sheep, the sheep, they are very harmless and peaceful. Uh -huh. And they can, you know, the reason why you are fighting everybody in the church is because you are a goat in the midst of the sheep. That's what it is. You are a goat. You are a goat. You want to break the fence wall. You see, they, they, that's what the goats are doing. So contention upon contention upon contention. But the sheep, the sheep, no. The sheep sometimes, you, you know, you'll be thinking that, you see how, like, you might even think they are stupid. The car is coming and the sheep is staying in the middle of the road. And they are blowing the horn. Bam, bam, bam. Up. Okay, the way you are looking at me, I, I can see you have not been living in the villages. But we that grew up in the village... You can see that the sheep in the village, they are so dumbed and so, you know what? Because they are depending on the shepherd to lead them. But you tell me, the goat, the goat, the goat. Stop on, he said, they rebel against God. They rebel, they are rebelling against God. So at the end of it, God also said that my spirit is also going to fight them. So you can see the two types of people that are roaming in the surface of this earth here. Only two groups. Only two groups. And one group that is a sheepfold group. Their bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost that is in them. They listen to the voice of the Lord. They do according to what the voice says. Because they have made Jesus Christ as their shepherd. The other ones said that Jesus, we don't need you. We have a master called the world, Satan. We are here. We are good. It's a wild world. Wild world. So everyone fighting. God said, don't worry. The moment that you are fighting among yourself, you have not made choice of me. My spirit will also fight you. 
My spirit will what? Will also fight you. Life is about what? About choice. Salvation is given. Grace is given to bring salvation to all men. The decision that one will make will determine the outcome of his life. Either you are going to be saved or you are going to be forever perish. The keeping the righteous way or the righteous standard of God for your life, it is all beneficial unto your life. Unto God alone be the glory. In Jesus' name, we have given his word. Let's say amen. Amen. God bless you.